When the Tesla Model S first came out in 2012, there were no superchargers at all in existence. Elon Musk and the team at Tesla laid out a plan to bring high-speed charging to their electric vehicles through public charging stations. And so today, there are over 25,000 Tesla superchargers worldwide across about 2,000 stations. Tesla's Gigafactory 2 in Buffalo, New York, the so-called forgotten Gigafactory that Tesla received in the Solar City acquisition, is responsible for building superchargers and the electronics that's used with them. And in 2021, the new Tesla Shanghai Supercharging Station Factory opened up in China to make superchargers and other products there as well. This new factory alone is said to be capable of producing 10,000 supercharger stalls per year. And yet, as Tesla grows its vehicle sales quarter after quarter, the supercharger network simply can't grow fast enough to keep up, as highlighted by this Twitter user who pointed out massive lineups at a supercharger station, to which Elon Musk replied that a massive increase in the supercharger network is underway. While Tesla has constantly been expanding the network by adding more stations and charging stalls around the world, Elon didn't specify if the increase would come from more chargers or higher powered chargers. The previous version 2 charging stalls were capable of outputting 150 kilowatts of power, enough to charge 50% of a Model S's battery in about 20 minutes and 80% in 40 minutes, at least on the 85 kilowatt hour battery packs. However, Tesla's latest V3 chargers have been rolling out and these output 250 kilowatts of maximum power. They can charge up a Model 3 or Y, which have a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack in a little more than half the time of the previous chargers. The new V3 chargers can add 1000 miles per hour to the battery or 75 miles every 5 minutes. This speed does fluctuate throughout the charging cycle as it slows down when the battery has a higher state of charge. But this said, a faster charging rate means a higher throughput of customers passing through the charging stations and this should speed things up and reduce the size of the lineups. Elon Musk could also be referring to what was mentioned at the Model S Plaid delivery event. Keep increasing the, the power of the superchargers, uh, you know, we're 250 kilowatts, so obviously that will we'll start going to you know, 280, 300, 350, right. yeah. Perhaps this massive increase in the network is directly related to this, which would further decrease lineups and wait times and provide for a better and faster customer experience. At the same time, Tesla has invested heavily in entertainment, which makes a lot of sense in a world with robo-taxis, but by adding a PlayStation 5 level graphics card to the Plaid Model S specifically, and all Teslas have the ability for games and entertainment, this works great while waiting for vehicles to charge up. But given the high power at supercharger stations, the batteries in Tesla's vehicles need to be able to actually accept this kind of fast charging rate. Otherwise, they could overheat and the batteries can be damaged or will experience more degradation. Tesla has taken steps to make charging more efficient by preconditioning the batteries on your way to the supercharger station in order to bring them to the optimal temperature. In addition, with their advances in thermal and heat pump technology, which is making its way to all of Tesla's vehicles, it's possible that they're now ready for even faster charging, though there are other factors at play besides just temperature management. That said, Tesla showed off its new heat pump and larger radiator for Plaid Model S, which may contribute to better heat dissipation when charging. Now recently, we've heard that the Federal Transport Minister in Germany said he was in direct contact with Tesla to try and ensure that Tesla superchargers are opened up to other vehicles and manufacturers. He also said that there are a few technical issues to be cleared up, but they're aiming for a barrier-free use of charging stations for all electric cars with a uniform payment system over mobile. Elon Musk said in 2020 that although it was low-key, Tesla superchargers are being made accessible to other electric cars. We can look at this both negatively for Tesla and positively. Tesla has spent 10 years building its own charging network. They've made the investments and this has created a sort of moat for the company that when you're looking to buy a new EV and considering the options, the exclusive Tesla network is a big selling point. If anyone could use Tesla's network, it could add even larger lineups from third-party cars 
and it would also weaken Tesla's competitive advantage that they worked hard to build by effectively boosting the size of charging networks for competitors. And I think this is a big deal. If you look at the report from Motor Trend when they compared a Tesla versus the Ford Mustang Mach-E, they said that while there were some options at Electrify America's charging station for 150 kilowatts, they were only able to get to a 50 kilowatt EV Go charger while they were trying out the vehicle. It took 45 minutes to go from 45 miles to 250 miles of range in the Mach-E. They said they spent some time using the Ford Pass app, which for a Tesla using a supercharger, it's all automatic, nothing like that is needed. And then they dealt with power delivery interruptions and error messages popping up when charging their Ford Mach-E. So the lack of availability of high-speed chargers and the software integration with third parties were huge downsides. The customer experience is very important. Apple, for example, is very careful about how they manage third parties. They have very strict rules for third parties. For example, when they eventually started selling certain Apple products at Best Buy, they carefully created a separate display area which only showcases Apple products on their own. All of the other brands are mixed together on the shelves when it comes to computers and even phones. Apple wants to make sure they deliver the proper message, their own message, to their customers. So if Tesla opens up to third parties, they will need to properly manage how it's done. Now this could also be viewed as an opportunity for Tesla. For one thing, it could be another major source of revenue for the company if more vehicles not only pay for the electricity, but the maintenance, operating, and infrastructure costs that Tesla continues to sink into their network. And in addition, Tesla should be able to charge a premium to make a profit. Perhaps they can charge a significantly higher price to third parties since they lack their investment in Tesla through the purchase of a Tesla vehicle. Part of the vehicle cost has paid for the infrastructure, and so this extra cash may allow Tesla to further expand and bolster their network. There is an advantage to being the core backbone network, which is like a toll road for everyone else. But one interesting thing that Elon Musk recently said that he's looking to get at getting Tesla to advertise in order to bring more awareness to the brand and the features that they have. I don't think he actually needs to do that, however. Superchargers could be another opportunity for Tesla to basically get paid and get free advertising. People would come to Tesla's home turf to pay them for electricity. Each time that happens, Tesla has a chance to show these other EV drivers what they're missing out on, be it through word of mouth, lower electricity prices, perhaps higher charging speeds that only Tesla vehicles support, or maybe even showcasing other exclusive features as well. All while competitor vehicles spend half an hour or so at Tesla's community charging station. Tesla has an exclusive community that they can draw people in to be part of it just by offering and showing them a taste of higher quality experiences than what they're used to with other vehicles on other networks. And before I forget, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and check out our website themarketisopen.com where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years and it's all freely available. Now one major problem with opening up the supercharger network is that it could slow down Tesla's pace of innovation and improvements. Elon Musk has said in the past that he's only looking to partner with companies who will adapt to Tesla and not the other way around, and just use and pay for Tesla's products and services. Tesla doesn't want to have to continually support hundreds of other automakers and their clunky software. That wouldn't make any sense at all. So I don't think Elon Musk would enter into a deal that would slow Tesla down. The company's mission is literally to speed things up. So I think the supercharger network will remain hugely advantageous for Tesla and Tesla's moat may still be a lot larger than people think. Consider that vehicles themselves have hardware and software which both need to be compatible with a supercharger's hardware and software. For instance, the right amount of power in kilowatts and the software to process transactions. Tesla is able to handle this seamlessly because their cars and chargers are all part of one company and the teams easily coordinate with each other. They can upgrade different parts of the network without needing to ask anyone, they own the entire experience. In the future, let's imagine a full self-driving scenario where Tesla deploys something like a snake charger at each charging station to automatically connect to and charge a vehicle. Or maybe in the future they have a giant induction charger where you just pull into a parking spot and your car starts charging just as an induction phone charger would 
which would be a convenience even if it requires some hardware changes and maybe there's a hit on efficiency. Either way, they'll need something like that if there's no one in the car who can plug it in, especially if your car has had a tough day at work busy making money for you. And so Tesla doesn't need to ask anyone, they can just go out and deploy their latest hardware and software and take some time to roll it out to all of their stations. But perhaps that will only be compatible with Tesla's vehicles, at least until others adopt Tesla's standard, which may require updating their own hardware to allow for this type of automatic connection. And it could take other OEMs years to get through a new hardware change into new vehicles that they produce. The rest of the industry is completely fragmented. There are many players doing their own thing. For self-driving, multiple companies working on their own LiDAR-based versions, see our video on Tesla Vision for more on that. But on top of that, there are going to be different vehicles with different charging hardware, different ways to open the charge ports, where they're located on each different car depending on the manufacturer. You never know how that might affect things. And so companies that want to take advantage of Tesla's network will likely need to embrace Tesla standards if they're inventing them as they go, because I don't think Tesla is going to wait around for anyone. Especially if you can imagine the nightmare it would be if Tesla had to support various payment systems and all these different types of vehicles. I don't think that's something Tesla cares about. I think the rest of the industry is further behind than people think. You've got everyone working on their own thing independently and suddenly everything needs to come together. Right now, Tesla only needs to worry about a few vehicle models which are very predictable. It's their charger and their car. So I think everyone else will have to conform to Tesla's standards, not the other way around. If that's the case, Tesla's network could remain extremely dominant as other OEMs are forced to embrace it, which will allow for more control or pricing power in the future. So I think, however small or large you think Tesla's mode is right now, they're currently working on a massive expansion to get even further ahead, and even if they open up some version of the network to third parties, at least in Europe, that will solidify Tesla's long-term dominance as other automakers will be dependent on Tesla's network. That mode is simply going to expand even further when full self-driving eventually comes into play. So do you think Tesla has a large moat around their current charging infrastructure? And let me know in the comments if you think it will benefit or decline if Tesla opens up certain features to third parties. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons who helps to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.